the solutions for the real number test first question two positive integers x and y are written as x is equal to p cube q square and y is equal to p q cube where p and q are distinct primes then find hcf of x and y so hcf we can find it using prime factorization method since it is given p and q are prime numbers so hcf will be p into q because both are having factors p and q and for hcf you need to choose the lowest power in the case of p 1 is the lowest power and in the case of q we are having 2 and 3 we should choose 2 so the hcf is equal to p q square so option a is the correct answer the number 3 to the power 13 minus 3 to the power 10 is divisible by what and all numbers that are divisible by the resulting number first we can take 3 to the power 10 common outside so 3 to the power 10 into 3 cube minus 1 now let us expand it further 3 to the power 10 into 3 cube is 27 minus 1 equal to 3 to the power 10 into 26 26 can be further prime factorized dividing by 2 we'll get 13 dividing by 13 we'll get 1 so the given number can be written as 3 to the power 10 into 2 into 13 it is having prime factors 2 3 and 13 so option B is the correct answer. The LCM of A and 18 is 36. The HCF of A and 18 is 2. Find the value of number A. So we have learnt a relation where HCF of two numbers into LCM of two numbers will be equal to product of the two numbers A and B. In this case, let us consider b as 18 and we will find a so the given hcf is 2 given lcm is 36 equal to a into 18 bringing the 18 to this side so 2 into 36 divided by 18 equal to a 18 can be divided by 2 times 36 can be divided by 18 to, with a quotient 2 so a is equal to 2 into 2 which is 4 option a is the correct answer find the smallest number which is a perfect square and is divisible by each of 16 20 and 24 for this problem we need to find the lcm first because the lcm of these three numbers 16 20 and 24 is the smallest number that is divisible by each of them then we will find out about the perfect square so 16 prime factors dividing by 2 8 8 by 2 is 4 4 by 2 is 2 and 2 by 2 is 1 20 by 2 is 10 10 by 2 is 5 5 by 5 is 1 24 by 2 is 12 12 by 2 is 6 6 by 2 is 3 3 by 3 is 1 so 16 is written as 2 to the power 4 20 can be written as 2 square into 5 24 can be written as 2 cube into 3 now the LCM of these three numbers will be 2 into 3 into 5 we have written all the prime factors the biggest power for 2 is 4 and for 3 and 5 it is 1 so LCM will be 2 to the power 4 which will be 16 into 5 into 3 is 15 so 16 into 15 is 6 5 are 30 5 1 is 5 plus 3 8 1 6 0 8 plus 6 is 14 and 2 so lcm is equal to 240 so the number that is required should be a perfect square and that number should also be divisible by 240 
if a number is divisible by 240 it will definitely be divisible by 16 20 and 24 because this number is the lcm so we will find a number that is a perfect square and it is also divisible by 240 from the given options 3600 is a perfect square so 3600 let us check if it is divisible by 240 240 1 times is 240 so we got remainder 20 bringing the other 0 down sorry we got remainder 120 so 1200 240 into 5 times is 5 fours are 20 5 twos are 10 plus 2 12 240 times 5 is 1200 0. We are getting remainder 0. So 3600 is divisible by 240. So our option correct answer is option C. If A is a rational number, then pi to the power 2a minus 2 to the power 2a is divisible by which of the following numbers? So this uh, notation uh, this can be represented as p I am taking this as p power 2x minus q power 2x this can be also written as p to the power x the whole square minus q to the power x the whole square now this can be written as this is in the form a square minus b square which can be written as a plus b into a minus b so this can be also written as p power x plus q power x into p power x minus q power x now let us substitute values of x when we substitute x is equal to 1 we are getting p plus q into p minus q now we will try for x is equal to 2 we will get p to the power sorry we will get By substituting value of x in this equation as 2 we are getting p square minus q square into p square plus q square which can be written as p plus q into p minus q into p square plus q square now x is equal to 3 let us consider this over here is which is equal to p cube minus q cube into p cube plus q cube which can be further expanded into p minus q into p minus q into p square plus q square plus p q and we are also left with p cube plus q cube this term can be expanded as p cube plus q cube this term can be expanded as p plus q into p square plus q square and minus p cube so we can check when we substitute x is equal to 1 the factors are p plus q and p minus q when we substitute x is equal to 2 the factors are p plus q and p minus q along with something else in the same way when we substitute x is equal to 3 p plus q is a factor p minus q is also a factor so p plus q and p minus q will always be a factor for this expression 
but in this expression we have chosen p is equal to 5 and q is equal to 2 so for 5 to the power 2a and minus 5 to the power 2a minus 2 to the power 2a 5 plus 2 and 5 minus 2 will be a factor so 5 plus 2 is equal to 7 and 5 minus 2 is equal to 3 so both 7 and 3 are factors of this for whatever values of a so option a is the correct answer both 3 and 5 the number is divisible by both 3 and 5 because it will be a factor now sixth question find the value of n if the HCF of 65 and 117 is expressed as 6 to the power n sorry 65 n minus 117 so first we will find out the HCF of 65 and 117 65 dividing by 5 15 3 so 13 times 1 the so 65 can be written as 5 times 13 and 117 when we factorize we uh, we can divide this by we can divide this by 3 3 3 is a 9 remainder 2 so 27 3 9 are 27 again it is divisible by 3 and we get 13 so 117 can be written as 3 square into 13 so the HCF of these two numbers will be 13 because that is the only common factor now we also have we substitute the value of HCF in this equation we will get 13 is equal to 65 n minus 117 this is dividing this whole equation by 13 we will get 13 by 13 is 1 is equal to 65 divided by 13 13 times 5 is 65 so 5n minus 117 divided by 13 is 9 so this can be written as 5n is equal to 9 plus 1 that means 5n is equal to 10 and n is equal to 2 so option d is the correct answer the hcf of 441-1 567 and 693 is we need to find the HCF let's prime factorize it 441 divided by 3 1 and 3 4s are 12 remainder 2 3 7s are 21 again dividing by 3 3 4s are 12 remainder 2 3 9s are 27 dividing by 7 or another time by 7 so 441 is written as 3 square times 7 square now 567 dividing by 3 3 1 is 3 3 8 are 24 remainder 2 3 9 are 27 again by 3 3 6 are 18 3 3 are 9 another time by 3 3 2 are 6 3 1 is 3 3 7 are 21 so 567 can be written as 3 to the power 4 into 7 finally we have 693 dividing by 3 2 3 1 3 3 7 are 21 remainder 2 3 7 are 21 dividing by 11 we get 1 so 693 can be written as 3 square into 7 into 11 now the HCF the factors that are common in all the three numbers are 3 and 7 and the lowest power of 3 is 2 lowest power of 7 is 1 3 square is 9 into 7 which is equal to 63 so option C is the answer 8th question the ratio between the LCM and HCF of 5, 15 and 20 is so 5 is written as 5 into 1 15 is written as 5 into 3 and 20 is written as 5 into 2 into 2 now the LCM is equal to 2 into 2 into 3 into 5 which is equal to 12 into 5 is equal to 60 
and HCF is equal to the only common factor is phi so HCF is phi the ratio of LCM and HCF is equal to 60 60 is to 5 5 is common for both of them we will cancel it by 5 we will get 5 1 is 5 remainder 1 5 2 is a 6 5 2 is a 10 so the ratio will be 12 is to 1 option D is the correct answer what will be the least possible number of planks if 3 pieces of timber of length 42 meters 49 meters and 63 meters have to be divided into planks of the same length so we need to divide these three values into a same with the same number and in order to find that number first we can find the we need to find the HCF of these three values we can find the HCF using prime factorization method so dividing 42 with 2 is 21 21 divided by 3 is 7 7 1 is 7 49 is 7 times 7 so 7 and 7 will give us the prime factors 63 dividing by 3 21 again dividing by 3 7 now dividing with 7 1 so 42 can be written as 2 into 3 into 7 49 can be written as 7 square and 63 can be written as 3 square into 7 now for HCF we need to choose the common factors first and all the three numbers have only one common prime factor which is 7 and we should choose the lowest exponent of 7 that is the lowest power so we should choose 1 so HCF is 7 power 1 or 7 so these three timbers of 42 meters length 49 meters length and 63 meters length have to be divided into planks planks of 7 meter length but we need to find how many planks we will be getting if we divide it in such a way so number of planks in order to find that first the 42 meter timber is divided into 7 meter planks add it with 49 meter timber divided into 7 meter planks and add it with 63 meter timber that is also divided into 7 meter planks 42 divided by 7 is 6 49 divided by 7 is 7 plus 63 by 7 is 9 and if we add 6 plus 7 plus 9 we will get 22 so we can form 22 planks of 7 meters length so option D is the correct answer the assertion is HCF of two numbers is 16 and their product is 3072 and the LCM is 162 and the reason is if A and B are two positive integers HCF into LCM is equal to A into B the reason is true we know that HCF and LCM the product of HCF and LCM is equal to product of the numbers we just need to check if the values given are true so the HCF is given as 16 and the product is given as 3072 let us substitute it over here so 6 into HCF is given as 16 and LCM is given as 162 let us check it HCF into LCM which is 162 into 16 6 twos are 12 6 6 are 36 plus 1 37 6 1 is 6 plus 3 9 2 6 and 1 2 7 plus 2 is 9 9 plus 6 is 15 and 2 when we multiply the HCF and LCM we are getting 2592 but it is said in the product that is A into B is 3072 we know that this statement is true but it is not matching the assertion so the assertion is wrong but the reason is true the option D is the correct answer the assertion A is false but reason R is true explain why 3 into 5 into 7 plus 7 is a composite number So 3 into 5 into 7 plus 7 is equal to 
in this term we can take 7 as common outside so 7 into 3 into 5 into 1 plus 1 which is equal to 7 into 5 threes of 15 plus 1 which is equal to 7 into 16 sorry so this is equal to 7 into 16 we can also write it as 7 into 16 into 1 we know that prime numbers have only two factors but this number is already having three factors since it is having more than two factors since it has more than two factors it is composite okay now we need to find the LCM of the smallest prime number and the smallest odd composite natural number. So the smallest prime number is 2 and the smallest smallest prime and the smallest odd composite number is nine nine is the smallest odd number which is also composite so we need to find the lcm of nine and two lcm of nine and two is equal to nine into two which is 18 the answer to this question is 18 the lcm of two numbers is Six four six nine nine, and their HCF is ninety seven, and one of the number is two two three one, and we need to find the other number. We know the relation A into B is equal to HCF into LCM. We will use that substituting A is equal to two two three one into B is equal to ninety seven into six four. 699 so b is equal to 97 into 64699 divided by 2231 let us try dividing 64699 with 2231 2231 times 2 is 2, 3 twos are 6, 2 twos are 4, 2 twos are 4. Multiplying 2 times, we will get 4, 4, 6, 2. 9 minus 2 is 7, 6 minus 6, 0, 4 minus 4, 0, 6 minus 4 is 2. Bringing down the 9, 2, 2, 3, 1 times, let's check for 8. 8, 1 is 8, 8, 3 is a 24. 8, 2 is a 16 plus 2, 18. 8 twos are 16 plus 1, 17. Yes, let us also check for 9 times. 2, 2, 3, 1 times 9 will be 9, 1 is 9. 9, 3 is a 27. 9 twos are 18 plus 2, 20. 9 twos are 18 plus 2, 20. We can use 9 times then. So this will give us 2, 0, 0, 7, 9, and we get remainder 0. So 2231 if we cancel it again 64699 it goes 29 times so b is equal to 97 into 29 so 97 multiplied by 29 9 7 are 63 9 9 are 81 plus 6 87 7 2 are 14 9 2 are 18 plus 1 19 3 7 plus 4 11 9 plus 1 10 plus 8 18 and 2 so the other number is 2 8 1 3 that's the answer for the question and 14 question what is the greatest possible speed at which a man can walk 52 kilometer and 91 kilometer 
in the exact number of minutes so we need to find the hcf of these two numbers two twos are four two six are twelve dividing by thirteen we'll get one seven one is seven reminder two seven three is a twenty one so 52 is written as 2 square into 13 and 91 is written as 7 into 13 the HCF is 13 since the greatest number that can divide both these numbers is 13 the man should walk 13 kilometers per minute this is the greatest possible speed uh, so that the man can cover exact number of uh, man can walk 52 kilometers and 91 kilometers in exact number of minutes so next question two bells toll at an interval of 24 minutes and 36 minutes so they told together at 9 a.m. What's the uh, next time they will toll? So we need to find the HC, HCF of these two, sorry, the LCM of these two numbers. The LCM of these two numbers, so let's prime factorize this 24 by 2 is 12, 12 by 2 is 6, 6 by 2 is 3, 36 by 2 is 1, 8, 18 by 2 is 9. 9 by 3 is 3 so 24 is written as 2 cube times 3 36 is written as 2 square times 3 square LCM is equal to 2 into 3 highest power of 2 is 3 highest power of 3 is 2 is equal to 8 into 9 so the LCM is 72 that means after 72 minutes the bells will toll together so we need to now convert 72 minutes into hours and we can add it to, to the 9 am so 72 dividing by 60 61 is 60 we'll get reminder 12 so after one hour and 12 minutes the bells will toll so adding one hour over here 9 will become 10 and 12 minutes both the bells will toll together so 10 12 am is the correct answer find the greatest number with which, which when divides 969 and 2059 it will leave remainder 9 and 11 respectively so we need to find the HCF of the number but before finding uh, not for these two number the HCF after subtracting 9 from this and after subtracting 11 from this so let us subtract 9 from 969 we will get 960 and subtracting 11 from 2059 we get we get 2048 so 960 on prime factorization 2 4 is 8 remainder 1 16 by 2 is 8 again dividing by 2 2 4 0 1 2 0 dividing by 2 60 60 by 2 is 30 30 by 2 is 15 15 by 3 is 5 so 960 can be written as 2 to the power 1 2 3 4 5 6 2 to the power 6 into 3 into 5 factorizing 2048 by 2 we get 1024 again by 2 we get 512 256 dividing by 2 128 dividing by 2 64 dividing by 2 we get 32 16 by 2 is 8 by 2 is 4 dividing by 2 we get 2 so 2048 can be written as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 2 to the power 11. Now we need to find the 
greatest common divisor or HCF of these two numbers. So the numbers are 2 to the power 6 into 3 into 5 and 2 to the power 11. The common factor is 2 and the highest power for uh, lowest power for 2 is 6. So HCF is 2 to the power 6 which is equal to 8 times 8 which is 64. So 64 is the greatest number that can divide 969 with a remainder 9 and 2059 with a remainder 11. So answer is 64. In a school 437 girls and 342 boys have been divided into groups so that each group has the same number of students and no group has boys and girls mixed. So what is the least number of groups needed? For this question, we need to find the HCF of these two numbers. So uh, prime factorization. 437 is divisible by 19. 19 times 2 is 38. So remainder will be 5 and we get 57. 437 divided by 9 19 twos are 38 5 remainder bringing down 7 19 threes are 57 and remainder 0 so 19 when dividing 437 by 19 we get 23 23 is also a prime number we get 1 342 is divisible by 3 1 remainder 1 12 by 3 is 4. Again dividing by 3, 3 3's are 9. Remainder 2, 3 8's are 24. Now 38 is divisible by 2. Dividing by 2 we get 19. 19 times 1 is 19. 437 is written as 19 into 23. 342 is written as 2 into 3 square into 19. The high HCF of these two numbers is 19. So each group must have 19 students so that the groups does not contain boys and girls mixed. The answer is 19. But it is also asked what is the least number of uh, Divide into so each group has the same number of students or no? So we found out the number of students in each group. Each group must have 19 students so that the boys and girls won't be mixed. But uh, we need to find the least number of groups needed. So we are going to find how many groups if uh, it, it is going to be formed. So 437 divided by 19 plus 342 divided by 19 so what this means is the all the girls are divided into groups of 19 all the boys are divided into groups of 19 when we add them we will get total number of groups so 437 divided by 19 will be 23 we just did the calculation for that and the same way 342 divided by 19 will be 2 into 3 square So this is equal to 23 plus 3 square is 9, 9 twos are 18, which is equal to 41. So the total number of groups is 41. 41 is the least possible number of groups that can be formed. Next question, the length, breadth and height of a room are 825, 675 and 450 respectively. Find the longest tape which can measure the three dimensions. So the longest uh, tape that can measure these three numbers is nothing but the HCF of these three numbers. So we'll find the HCF. Phi one is five, remainder three. Six phi is a thirty, remainder two. Phi. Phi phi is a twenty-five. So again by phi, 
5 3 is a 15 remainder 1 5 3 is a 15 dividing by 3 and then dividing by 11 for 6 75 we'll divide by 5 5 1 is 5 remainder 1 5 3 is a 15 remainder 2 5 5 is a 25 again by 5 5 2 is a 10 remainder 3 5 7 is a 35 dividing by 3 we get 9 9 by 3 we get 3 3 by 3 we'll get 1 450 dividing by 5 5 9 is a 45 0 again by 5 5 1 is 5 5 8 is a 40 dividing by 2 we get 9 9 by 3 is 3 3 by 3 is 1 825 is written as 5 into 5 into 3 into 11 5 into 5 I mean or we can write this as we can write 825 as 5 square into 3 into 11 675 can be written as 5 square into 3 cube 675 is written as 5 square into 3 cube 450 is written as 5 square into 2 into 3 square 5 square into 3 square into 2 now the HCF of these three numbers is equal to the common factors of 5 and 3 and the power of 5 the least power of 5 is 2 in all cases it is 2 so it is 2 and the least power of 3 is 1 so 25 into 3 will be a HCF which is 75 meters 75 meters is the longest tape with which we can measure all the three dimensions of the room 75 meters is our answer find the largest number which will divide 398 436 and 542 and leaving remainder 7 11 and 15 respectively so first we will subtract 7 11 and 15 from these numbers and we will with the resulting numbers all we need to do is find the HCF so let us subtract 7 from 398 we will get 391 subtracting 11 from 436 6 minus 1 is 5 3 minus 1 is 2 we got 425 this will become 3 and 1 12 minus 5 is 7 3 minus 1 is 2 and 5 so now we need to find the HCF of 391, 425 and 527. 391 is divisible by 17. 17 2 is a 2 minus 2 plus 3, 34. Divide 391 by 17. 17 2 is a 34. Dividing 39, uh, sorry, subtracting 39, uh, 34, we'll get 5, 1, 17 times 3 is 51. So 17 goes 23 times, 23 is also a prime number. 425 dividing by 5, 8, 5 is a 40, remainder 2, 5, 5 is a 25. Again dividing by 5, 5, 1 is 5, remainder 3, 7, 5 is a 35, 17 is a prime number. 527 is divisible by 13 so 527 dividing by 13 13 into 3 is a 39 13 times 4 is 52 so we should use 4 here we will get 52 and So we cannot divide 527 with 13. So sorry. Let us check if 527 is divisible by 17. 17 into 3 is 51. Remainder is 1 and 7. 
17 times 1 is 17 so the remainder is 0 so dividing 527 with 17 we'll get 31 31 is also a prime number so remainder is here 1 so 391 is written as 17 into 23 425 is written as 5 square into 17 and 527 is written as 17 into 31 we need to find the largest number which will divide these three numbers with remainders so we need to find the hcf of these three numbers hcf is a common factor is 17 so when we divide 17 uh, when we divide these three numbers with 17 we will get remainder 0 so when we divide these three numbers that is 398 436 and 542 with 17 we will get remainder 7, 11 and 15 respectively. So our answer is 17. Prove that root 5 is an irrational number. So first we will assume root 5 is rational. Since it is a rational number, we can find two numbers A and B. A and B a co-prime a rational a rational number sorry condition for any number to be a rational number is they can be represented in the form p by q so here we are representing root 5 as a by b where a and b are co-prime numbers so this can be written as root 5 into b is equal to a now let us square on both sides we will get 5 b square is equal to a square since 5 is multiplied with b square and which is equal to a square we can say 5 is a factor of a square and according to fundamental theorem of arithmetic 5 is also a factor of a so the number a can be written as 5 into some other number c let this be equation 1 So we got a is equal to 5c. We are representing a as 5c. Let us consider this as equation 2. Now we will substitute a is equal to 5c in this equation. So 5b square is equal to a square, but we are writing a is equal to 5c. So it is equal to 5c the whole square that gives us 5b square is equal to 25c square cancelling 5 on both sides we will get b square is equal to 5 into c square so b square is equal to 5 into some other number which means 5 is a factor of c square sorry 5 is a factor of b square yes 5 is a factor of b square which also means 5 is a factor of b so we just found out 5 is a factor of a but 5 is also a factor of b we assumed uh, root 5 is rational and we written a and b are co-prime but now we are getting a and b has common factor 5 a and b has common factor i but a and b should be co-prime this contradiction occurs
because our assumption is wrong we have assumed in the first step that root 5 is rational that assumption is wrong hence root 5 is irrational next question is prove that 7 plus 5 root 3 is irrational the same way we will assume 7 plus 5 root 3 is rational then we can find if this is sorry yeah so 7 plus 5 root 3 is rational means we can find two numbers a and b such that a and b are co prime so this can be written as by bringing b over here we can write this as b into 7 plus 5 root 3 is equal to a or we can write it like this the trick for solving this question is keep the uh, term with root on the left hand side and bring everything else to the right hand side so we will keep 5 root 3 here We'll take 7 over there so 5 root 3 is equal to a by b minus 7 this gives root 3 is equal to 1 by 5 into a by b minus 7 root 3 is equal to so a by b minus 7 b by b we can write it like that 1 by 5 into a by b minus 7b by b i just multiplied and divided with b can be written as 1 by 5 into a minus 7b by b so we got root 3 is equal to a minus 7b by by b now we know that root 3 is irrational so lhs is irrational but a rhs which is a minus 7b by 5b is rational because it is of the form p by q the numerator will also give us an integer the denominator will also give us an integer so it satisfies the condition for rationality since we are getting lhs as a irrational number and rhs as a rational number this contradiction is due to our wrong assumption hence 7 plus 5 root 3 is irrational our assumption was 7 plus 5 root 3 is rational since we have proved our assumption is wrong 7 plus 5 root 3 is an irrational number next question is Priya works as a librarian in Bright Scholar International School in Pune she ordered books on English science and mathematics she received 96 English books 240 science books and 336 max books she want to arrange these books in stacks as that each stack contains same number of books and that too of only one subject she also wants to keep the number of stacks minimum all we need to do is find the hcf of these three numbers so first we will find first we will find the hcf which is 96 can be divided with 2 we will get we get 48 48 by 2 is 24 24 by 2 is 12 12 by 2 is 6 6 by 2 is 3 so 240 can be divided by 2 120 by 2 is 60 
30 by 2 is 15 15 by 3 will be left with 5 336 divided by 3 will get 3 1 is 3 3 1 is 3 3 2 is 6 dividing by 2 we will get 5 remainder 1 6 again by 2 2 2 is 4 remainder 1, 8 again by 2 we will get 14 again by 2 we will get 7 so the number 96 can be written as 2 to the power 1 2 3 4 5 2 to the power 5 into 3 number 240 is written as 2 to the power 1 2 3 4 2 to the power 4 into 3 into 5 and finally 336 can be written as 2 to the power 1 2 3 4 2 to the power 4 into 3 into 7 at cf of these three numbers will be the common factors are 2 and 3 least power of 2 is 4 least power of 3 is 1 is equal to 16 into 3 which is 48 so we found number of books in each stack the each stack will contain 48 books so the answer for first question is 48 we also need to find the number of stacks formed the English books are totally 96 and we are dividing it into 48 books each stack the next set of books is next set of books is science 240 we are dividing that also into 48 sets and finally we have 336 divided by 48 this will give us the number of stacks 48 by 96 will be 2 240 divided by 48 48 times 5 is 240 so 2 plus 5 and 336 dividing by 48 it will go 7 times So 2 plus 5 plus 7 which is equal to 7 plus 5 is 12 plus 2 is 14 so the total number of stacks is 14 now for the last question find the height of each stack of English books if the thickness of each English book is 3 cm so each stack contains 48 books So English book has thickness of 3 cm so 48 into 3 which will be 28, 8 3s are 24 4 3s are 12 plus 2 14 which will be equal to 144 cm this is the answer for the third subdivision the number of books in each stack will be 48 number of stacks formed will be 14 and the height of each stack is each stack of english book is 144 centimeter this is the answer for the question now the last question Shamla is a tuition teacher and teaches mathematics to some kids at her home. She is very innovative and always planned new games to make her students learn. Also, today she has planned prime number game. She announces first number two in her class and then asks first students to multiply it by a prime number, pass it to second student. Second student multiplies it by a prime number, passes to third student, and finally they got the number 173250. So she asked some questions how many students are there in the class what is the highest prime number used what is the least prime number used and which prime number has been used maximum times so for all these questions we need to find the prime factors of this number so let's prime factorize this number one seven three two five zero divisible by two eight two is a sixteen remainder one six two is a twelve remainder one six 2 2s are 4 remainder 1 and 5 
let's check if it's divisible by 3 8 plus 6 is 14 plus 6 is 20 plus 2 is 22 plus 5 is 27 it is divisible by 3 so we'll divide it by 3 3 twos are 6 remainder 2 so 26 8 threes are 24 remainder 2 again 8 threes are 24 remainder 2 7 threes are 21 remainder 1 and 3 fives are 15 again dividing by 3 3 nines are 27 remainder 1 3 six are 18 3 twos are 6 remainder 1 3 fives are 15 so this number is divisible by 5 now so let's divide it by 5 5 1 is 5 remainder 4 5 nines are 45 remainder 1 5 twos are 10 remainder 2 5 fives are 25 Again dividing by 5, 5 threes are 15, remainder 4, 5 eights are 40, remainder 2, 5 fives are 45. Sorry, 5 fives are 25. Yeah. Dividing by 5 a third time, 5 sevens are 35, remainder 3, 5 sevens are 35. Now dividing by 7 and 11. 1, 7, 3, 2, 5, 0 can be written as 2 into 3 square into 5 cube into 7 into 11 so the prime factorization is 2 into 3 square into 5 cube into 7 into 11 now how many students are in the class so the first number is 2 which is given by the teacher and every other prime number is given by the student so the number of students in the class will be number of prime numbers which are over here so it will be 1 2 5 is 3 times so 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 2 is 7 so 7 d is the correct option now what is the highest prime number used by the student the highest prime number used is 11 which is option a what is the least prime number used by the students here the smallest prime number is 2 but it is used by the teacher and the student used 3 as the smallest prime number so option D is the correct answer here and which prime number has been used maximum times 5 is the prime number that has been used 3 times so 5 is the answer option C any doubts regarding these questions you can discuss in comment section.